Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing the problem named as longest subarray with some key. Now in this problem, as the name suggests, we need to find the longest subarray with the sum as k. So before evaluating the test case, let us first quickly revise our concepts of subarray. So subarray is nothing but a contiguous part of the array. So if the given array is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then we consider 1, 2 and 3 as a subarray, 2, 3, 4 as a subarray. But we do not consider 2, 4, 5 because 3 is not there. So it is not contiguous. So let me take one more example so that it would be absolutely clear. We don't consider 1, 4, 5 as a subarray because 2 and 3 are not included. Now, in this given test case, if we take up this subarray that is 5 plus 2 7, then plus 7 14, then plus 1 is equal to 15. If we take up this subarray, then this is the longest one. The first brute force approach that comes to our mind is that we would consider all possible subarrays and all the subarrays which give me the sum as k would be the probable candidates and out of them the longest one would be the answer so now how to find all possible subarrays what we would do is we would take up a pointer i and j initially both would start from the first position so we would consider the subarray from i to j that is just one because i is also at one j is also at one then we would increment the position of j and that would be from i to j again that is 1 and 2 itself. Then we would increment the position of j again and we would again take help from i to j that is 1, 2 and 3. After j is at the end we would increment the position of i. So now we would increment the position of i. And then we would again make it go i and j at the same position. So now i and j, so this would be just 2. And then we would be again making it move forward. That would be 2 and 3, i to j. And then j is done. So now i would move forward. So i would be at this position. So again from i to j. So we would now have just 3. After this, there is no place for j. After that, i couldn't move forward. So, by using this technique, by using the idea of two pointers and iterating over them in a nested loop, we can find all the possible subarrays. Then we can, at the end, we would just have a vector. We would build up this, we would build up this, we would build up this. And all the possible subarrays, we would just need the length. So, if it is, if the sum is equal, we would take out, we would first build up the vector we would take out the sum. If sum is equals to the value that is given, that is k, if it is equal, we would compare it with the value that we have already there, like we have initialized answer is equals to 0. We would take out the maximum of it and we would return it. Okay. So now what would be the time complexity? So for the first element, we are iterating for n elements. For the second element, we are iterating n minus 1 element. For the third element, we are iterating n minus 2 element and the cycle goes on, whatever be the value of n. So now we can say that for one element, if we are doing n operation, then for n elements, we would be doing n square operation. So the time complexity of this approach is big O of n square. And to check again the sum of it would be again big O of n. In the worst scenario, because in the worst scenario, the whole array can be taken into consideration. So now, can we do better than this or not? To do better than this, let us break down the solution in the scenario where initially k is equals to 0. So now, this is a very famous problem, subarray with 0 sum. So now, how to find the solution of this? We would find the prefix sum of it. So now what is prefix sum? Prefix sum is nothing but sum till this point. 
So suppose this is the given array and we want to find the prefix sum of it. In the sum till this point is 1. Sum till this point is 1 plus 3 that is 4. Sum till this point is 1 plus 3, 4. 4 plus 2 that is 6. Sum till this point is what? 1 plus 3, 4. 4 plus 2, 6. 6 plus 5, 11. Sum till this point is again 11 and then 0. That is just 11 and this would be 12. So, if you carefully observe, then you can say that the first element is just a copy of it. The next value is nothing but previous value plus this value. Previous value, see this value is a sum of this value and this value. So, this value is a sum of this value and this value. This value is a sum of this value and this value. So, to find the prefix sum or to build up the prefix sum, we don't need to compute the sum till that point. What we can do is we can just write that prefix of i is equals to prefix of i minus 1 plus a of i. So we can say that see this value, upper value and the last value. Last value is this value and upper value is this value. And we would say that prefix of 0 is equals to a of 0. And rest in all other condition, we would have this. This is the algorithm to find the prefix sum in the most optimal way. Okay. So, let us head back. So, now if we find the prefix sum, the first point would be the same, that is just 5. The next point would be 5 plus minus 2, that is 3. 3 plus 2 is equals to 5. 5 minus 8 is equals to minus 3. Minus 3 plus 1 is equals to minus 2. Minus 2 plus 7 is equals to plus 5. Plus 5 plus 10 is equals to 15. 15 plus 23 is equals to 38. Till this point, the sum was 5. But this point also, the sum is again 5. And this means that the sum from this point to this point equals to 0. Okay. What does this mean? Till this point, the sum is 5. Till this point also, the sum is 5. That means the sum from that point to that point equals to 0. But if I tell you the right way, then the sum suppose 5 is here. And the sum is the same here. That means that the incrementation and decrementation has been cancelled out. And this point has the same value. I mean, here and here, sum is 0. Okay? So I can say that. So now, this is how I can find if the subarray sum is 0. Okay. So, what we would do is, we would save the values. Okay. We would save the values of 5. Then we would again see 5. So, we can say that the maximum value that we have got up till now, length up till now is what? Suppose this is, suppose this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we can say that the length is 5 minus 2, that is 3. So, see. 5 minus 2. So, this point also 5, this point also 5. So, 5 minus 2 equals to 3. Okay. So, now just stop at this point and try to think, can you use it when k is not equal to 0? Suppose, till this point the value is x and this point the value is k. Then that means that the sum from this point to this point is equals to k. So now let us see that. Let us first build up the prefix sum. So the first value would be copied and then 10 plus 5, 15. 15 plus 2, 17. 17 plus 7 is equals to 24. And this would be 25. And this would be 34. If this value is x plus k, if this value is x plus k, then 25 is equals to x plus k. So what would be the value of x? K's value we already know. So, K value is equals to 15. 25 is equals to X plus 15. X is equals to 25 minus 15. That is equals to 10. So, if we are at the value 25, we just need to see if we have seen 10 or not. Yes, we have seen 10. So, this means that this value till this value, the sum was... 15. Yes, the sum is 15. So, see, repeating the same in Hindi is, 
सपोज यहां तक का वैल्यू x है और यहां पे x प्लस के है दैट मीन्स यहां से यहां तक का वैल्यू सिर्फ के लेवल ही इंक्रीमेंट हुआ है तो इफ करेंट वैल्यू को अगर हम x प्लस के मान ले तो करेंट वैल्यू माइनस के वैल्यू इफ वी सर्च इट दैट वुड बी द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट ऑफ द सब एरे विथ सम के सो नाउ to do this it is very easy we would just build out the prefix sum and after each building out we need if it has occurred first or not so what we would do is we would simply hash the values in a map with log n time complexity or an unordered map with constant time complexity in average case okay so now there is one more small thing to notice and the prefix sum values are 5 1 2 3 5 and then suppose again 7 then again 5 so what we need to do is we need to store the very first occurrence of that why because for this element if we had stored the recent occurrence then this would return me this but if we had stored the first occurrence then we would get the correct length that is this one to get the longest length we should remember the first occurrence this is the reason of it okay hope i am clear till this point now let's move to the implementation and it would be more clear now what i would do is i would have map int and int and then i would have m okay and then i initially the length is 0 this is equals to length and then we would have m of 0 is equals to minus 1 why consider the scenario when k is equals to 0 and we have the array as minus 2 plus 1 then again plus 1 if we build out the prefix sum of this this would become minus 2 and this would become minus 1 and this would become 0 and we needed 0 but up till now we have not seen any 0 that is why initially we would load the sum as 0 in the minus 1 index so that we get the correct length so now let us move forward to this and then what we would do is we would initialize for int i is equals to 0 i is less than n and i plus plus then we would go down and then we would have the sum so we would have int sum is equals to 0 and this is just like having the prefix sum instead of prefix sum instead of storing that in the manipulating the original array we can just have a variable because we don't want that okay so i can just have sum plus equals to a of i this is also known as running sum running sum as you can say a short of prefix sum when you don't need the past values of the prefix sum it's just like running sum the same thing but we are not taking any auxiliary array to store the prefix sum values okay so now what we would do is we would first check if this value is already present or not so we would first m of m dot find if sum minus k if we have already seen this value is not equal to m dot n that means it is not pointing to the end pointing to the end means that the value is not present not pointing to the end means that is pointing to some location which is valid so we would have that and we would say l is equals to max of whatever was already stored and then so if the current value is the first time we are seeing the value okay then only we would hash this value and then we would simply return the value l let us compile and run and see how many mistakes are we making we are not making any mistakes up till now okay so now let us talk about the time complexity of this approach to hash the values we are using map which has a time complexity of log n and then we are iterating over this so we are having big o of n operation for each operation we are finding that value so this is again two log n okay so ignoring the constant that would be log n so for one element we are doing log n operation so for n element we would be doing 
n log n operation okay and if you use an unordered map the time complexity would be big o of n but in the worst scenario the time complexity of unordered map is big o of n not big o of 1 now if you were here till this point of the solution consider liking the video and leaving a comment like understood or one to increase the reach of the video thank you and have a nice day